Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me. Today is March 22nd, 2022, and there has been a response to the appeal that Attorney Jennifer Bonjean had submitted February 17th, 2022, and um, it's going to be spoken from the Chicago Tribune and by Jason Meisner and Megan Crepe. And they're going to talk about what the federal prosecution stated in their 150 page brief. I'm not gonna read all that. Nine times out of 10, the majority of people won't even understand what's being said unless it's broken down. So we'll do that after everybody's hype has been, you know, talked about and they've been the first to put it out on their page. Then we'll sit back and analyze it, okay? So let's get into the article. Here we go. Are Kelly racketeering conviction defended by prosecutors Chicago Tribune? Federal prosecutors in New York filed more than 150 pages in legal briefs late Monday defending the Chicago-based singer R. Kelly's conviction last year on racketeering charges, arguing the evidence of his sexual misdeeds was overwhelming and that jurors were properly vetted for any potential bias. The filings were a response to motions by Kelly's attorney last month alleging prosecutors misused a federal statute meant to go after gang leaders and that Kelly's ineffective lawyers failed to keep jurors off the panel hood been tainted by what they'd seen or read about Kelly's exploits. Kelly, 54, was convicted September 27th in U.S. District Court in Brooklyn on racketeering conspiracy charges alleging he used his music career to further a criminal enterprise. The jury found him guilty of 12 individual illegal acts, including sex with multiple underage girls as well as a 1994 scheme to bribe an Illinois public aid official to get a phony ID for 15-year-old singer Aaliyah so the two could get married. In their motions, prosecutors wrote that all of the elements to sustain a racketeering conviction were proved beyond a reasonable doubt and that claims Kelly's trial was tainted by juror bias or errors by his trial attorneys were without merit. The evidence against the defendant on all charges was overwhelming and the defendant has presented no evidence to demonstrate that the jury's verdict was based on anything other than the evidence presented at trial, prosecutors wrote. In particular, prosecutors noted that the jury selection in the case effectively drilled down on any preconceived notions potential jurors had about Kelly, including whether they had seen the surviving R. Kelly docuseries and whether they could be fair and render a verdict based solely on the evidence presented in court. Kelly's new attorney, Jennifer Bon Jean, has blasted Kelly's trial lawyers as serially incompetent and saying they failed to challenge several jurors had admitted seeing the 2019 program portraying Kelly as a serial predator. One member of the anonymous panel, juror number three, admitted on a questionnaire that had seen the documentary and heard that Kelly has been sleeping with underage girls. While the juror went on to say he could remain impartial, Bon Jean said that defies logic. Anyone had seen surviving R. Kelly should have been removed for cause, Bon Jean wrote in her motion in February. Prosecutors, however, wrote Monday that juror number three later acknowledged on the questionnaire that he doesn't know the full story, so I have no feelings about it. I remain impartial. In questioning before the court, the juror said there was no reason at all why he couldn't give both sides a fair trial, prosecutor said. U.S. District Judge and Donnelly is unlikely to grant a new trial to Kelly, but the issues being argued before her telegraph what will eventually be presented to the Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Bon Jean has until April 4 to file any reply. Meanwhile, Kelly's scheduled May 4 sentencing date is fast approaching. He faces 10 years to life in prison. Kelly is currently being held without bond at a federal detention facility in Brooklyn. Bon Jean has hinted she may ask for a delay of the sentencing hearing pending Kelly's trial on a separate federal case brought in Chicago, which is currently set for August. The singer is charged here with running a multi-year scheme to buy back sex tapes he allegedly made with underage girls and to bribe or coerce witnesses in his 2008 child pornography trial in Cook County, which ended in acquittal. 
other indictments alleging sexual abuse by Kelly brought in Cook County in February 2019 have yet to be scheduled for trial. Jmeisner at ChicagoTribune.com Nkrapo at ChicagoTribune.com So, we've just heard um, that the brief has come forth and the prosecution has decided that they should stand on what they convicted Robert Sylvester Kelly on. Um, we're going to look at the 150 page brief when it has, when all the hype is over, because everyone's going to have their opinions and their views. They're going to go wild and crazy, but give it about three or four days afterwards. We're going to definitely sit down and analyze this from our perspective of R. Kelly Appeal TV. And you know how we get down here. So, um, yeah, what do you think? What what are some of your thoughts? Do you think that, um, that, what are your feelings? Me, myself right now, I'm totally numb. I feel like as though um, there should have been, there should be definitely a new trial and if this goes down in history, my fear is that everyone will be subject to this type of abuse against the criminal justice system relating to everyone's case. If everyone, if anyone goes through that system, everyone could be charged in the same exact way. That includes our loved ones people we don't know, and God forbid, even ourselves. So please comment, like, subscribe, and share your views of what you feel right now. Thank you. And as always, keep it 100.